So what is the right tax policy at a time of increasing inequality? Joining us right now is Kevin O'Leary, chairman at uh, O'Shares ETF, Shark Tank, co-host, of course, CNBC contributor, Mr. Wonderful, and John Hope Bryan, who's also wonderful, founder and CEO of Operation Hope. John's new book, Up From Nothing, The Untold Story of How We All Succeed, comes out on October 6th, and we are thrilled to have both of them uh, here with us. Uh, way in on this, and I'll, I'll start with you, Kevin. You look at the SALT issue. You look at some of these broader issues, uh, depending on who, who, wins, uh, who wins the White House in November. Um, what do you think the right answer is? Well, let's, start, let's start on the SALT side. There is only one answer that's correct. The only way to deal with SALT, state and local tax deductibility, is not to allow it to deduct at all. Because when you allow deductions of <clears> SALT, <throat> You are rewarding the inefficient and mediocrity of management of states like New York, Massachusetts, and lots of other ones that don't know how to run their businesses, basically. And because you're, you're hiding the fact that they're inefficient. And so what I would rather do is say the king has no clothes, expose the fact that they are charging you way more, and reward the states like Florida and Texas who do a much better job. And so what's happening here, it's really boiling down to saying... If you look at the services provided in Texas versus what you get in New York City, they're practically identical. And yet you pay 20 percent more for them in New York. Why? New York is poorly run. And I'm not trying to blame anybody or make this a partisan issue. The fact is, when you do not allow deductibility, you force open the fact that some states just aren't doing a very good job. And that's the right way to do it. I don't want to reward mediocrity and build inefficiency into it. I want a healthy competition between every state. And if you have to charge a lot more to run your operation, maybe you should probably elect somebody who can do a better job. And I remember you reporting just a couple of years ago on the decision in Jersey City for Amazon to be basically kicked out of there. 15,000 jobs. How do, you, how do you think people think about that now with unemployment in Jersey City over 9%? Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe the people that did that shouldn't be elected again. And I'm not trying to be partisan about it. You need good policy. And good policy is total transparency on tax and forcing everybody to realize when you charge more than 50% on personal tax, and SALT's a big part of that, you get the law of diminishing returns. People that are in states that they pay more than 50 percent tax eventually want to go to states where it's less. It's that simple. Shine the light of transparency on it and don't play the game of deductibility okay. at all anywhere. John, I gather you're on the other side of this, my friend. Well, I'm, I'm very disappointed this morning. My middle name is Hope, but I'm very disappointed because I thought that Kevin and I would actually be on the same page on this. Um, the uh, the federal government, and I have great respect for Kevin, obviously, he's very smart. The federal government is actually doing what he says he doesn't like, which is picking winners and losers. Um, you have, oddly enough, uh, the high GDP states, which are throwing money into the federal treasury, uh, uh, are, you know, of a certain <laughs> uh, hue, uh, and they are they're tend to be urban, and they tend to be higher income. Uh, and uh, we have other states which, uh, if you have a three hundred thousand dollar, forty thousand dollar house in that state, and you you're not paying, you don't have the same cost or carry burden uh, as these as these states that I'm I'm talking about. And the, in effect, this, the the federal government through this approach is disincentivizing those who live in these states which are contributing the most GDP uh, that have a higher local and state tax uh, carry burden. Um, and incentivizing others unfairly. I think we, we need to stop playing these political games. Now, the, let me go to the issue that's close to my heart. Uh, I was, again, I was hoping that Kevin and I would be on the same page on this. Uh, hundred and What I'm concerned about is a $150,000 family where you got a firefighter and a teacher. And they, to get together, they make 75 and 75, make $150,000. That family that was a $400,000 house in one of these so-called mismanaged states, which actually is the largest GDP states in the country. So I, don't know, I don't know how that quite factors. Um, uh, they are getting hit over the head uh, with a tax bill that is prohibiting them from taking that extra $10,000 and sending their kids to college or starting a business or having a, a safety fund or saving for retirement. Uh, and so you don't have to to, uh, to throw the baby out of the bathwater. You don't have to say go from $10,000 to unlimited again. 
You can say, let's cap it at $20,000. Let's cap it at $25,000. Cap it at $50,000. That's probably, you don't need to, go, need to go that far. You cap it at $25,000, you take the pressure off of the middle income families between forty-five and one hundred fifty thousand dollars right now in the middle of this pandemic, and we need it. We need we need the farm team here, uh, Andrew, to have as much girth and as much support as they can. The farm team is the middle class. Seventy percent of this economy is consumer spending, not rich people buying yachts. 